Welcome to Kokozini YouTube channel. Um, this is the part two of the dress shirt. If you haven't watched the part one yet, um, there's a link below to go to part one. Part one is on drafting and cutting the dress. And part two, which is this one, is for putting the pieces all together. If you're new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also press the notification button to, to notify you when I have new uploads on the channel. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for always coming back. Well, let's get started joining the dress together. Grab the front and back bodice. So here is my back bodice. I'm going to open it with the right side of the fabric facing up like, like I have here. And I'm going to grab the front bodice, open it up. So I'm going to attach the right side of the front bodice to the right side of the back bodice on the shoulder like that. And I'm going to attach the other side too on the shoulder. So once you have aligned these two, take it to the machine and sew it with half an inch seam allowance. I am done sewing it here. I have joined it together right here. You can see it, it's a finish seam allowance. And I have also finished the edges with a serger or interlock. I also finished interlock the, the armhole too and all the sides because I, I like interlocking my, my fabrics. If you're following me, you, you definitely notice that. Well, so once I put that, I'm do I just want to show you something real quick. So when I aligned this together, you can see that there is the front part is shorter than the, you see, it's shorter than the back. And you know the reason why? It's because of that one inch that we added to the back. Right there. Okay, so um, that is okay. Everything is okay. So once you align the, the armhole right there, like the sides, if you put it together from the side and you make sure you join the front and the back side together, you see the excess one inch at the back moved forward a little bit. And now, you see, now they are all aligned together. Okay. So don't freak out when you see that your, your dress is not aligning initially. Do not freak out. Once you align it by the side, you it's going to be okay. I'm going to join um, to add pocket to mine. So if you have pocket, here's the time to start adding it before you join the side seam. If you're not adding pocket, you just go ahead and just sew it all the way down like that. Okay. So, but if you're adding pocket, then you, this is the time that you have to add the pockets in. I have a, pa a pattern um, that you can download to cut out the pockets. I'll put it in the description box below. So I'm going to join the right side of my pocket to the right side of the, the bodice, both front and back. So I usually put my pocket like around 10 inches from my from my, you know, bust line or ammo. So I've measured 10 inches and I'm just going to add, attach my pocket right there. Then I'm going to stitch it with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, very small stitch, just to attach the pocket to the bodies. Then I'm going to do this to all the four sides and I'll be right back. So here it is, I am done attaching the pocket and I have ironed it to a side also. That is a quarter of an inch that I use in joining it right there. So I ironed it flat to the other side. I did the same thing to all the remaining four sides too. So now I'm going to go ahead and join it. And here is what I am going to do. So first I'm going to make sure it's all aligned together 
then I'm going to start stitching with one inch seam allowance right from there. I'll go all the way down and when I get to the pocket right there, I will pivot and go in. Then I will change that to half an inch seam allowance all the way around the pocket. Then I, when I get there, I'm going to pivot back. Then I'll go start stitching at one inch seam allowance all the way down. So I am done here doing it and here is what it looks like. So that's the stitch. I st make sure I stitch it all the way. And when I got to the pocket, I pivot, got in, sew the pocket all the way around. And um, pivot in again and sew one inch all the way down. So that is the two pockets. So we're going to set this apart and we're going to grab our sleeves. So separate your sleeve and um, go ahead and join it with the right side facing each other. Make sure you stitch it at the side with one inch seam allowance. So now we're going to attach it to the bodice. I have gone ahead and I've d I'm done stitching the side with one inch seam allowance all the way down. So I have finished the edges also. I have finished the hem, the edges of the hem, and also the edges of the sleeves. So here's the wrong side of the bodies. So we're going to turn the armhole, um, the sleeve into the right side because we're going to join into the bodice. So that is the seam line of the sleeves. Okay, I, I've, I just opened it up and that is also the seam line of the bodice. So I always love to align my seam lines properly. So I'm going to join the both seam lines together on the stitch. I just like clean. I like my stitches to be clean. Then I'm going to pin it together. I'm going to start pinning the um, sleeves to the bodies. So once you get towards the shoulder side, you, you just, um, just leave it right there. So we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So you notice that the sleeve has more excess fabric than the bodice itself. So that is the two inches that we added to the sleeves. If you remember when we were cutting the sleeves, so that will make out for either the garters or the pleats. I'm just going to add two pleats to mine. Um, if you want to add garters to yours, this is the time to add your garters to the sleeves, then attach it to the bodice. So with the excess on that sleeves, I'm just going to look for the middle part. So you see there's space in the two sides right there and right there. So I'm just going to pin, pin it in the middle. So I'll pin the sleeves to the bodies in the middle because I'm only doing two pleats into my own sleeves. So whatever you want to do is up to you. So um, that space that I have is what I'm going to use for my pleats. 
I'm just going to fold it. You see the way I'm doing it right now? I'm just going to fold it like that. And that's the pleat. So I'm, then I'll use a pin to hold it down. I'll do the same to the other side. You see that excess right there? I'm just going to fold it down towards the middle or towards the shoulder line or st shoulder stitch. Then I'll pin it down. Then I'm just going to take it to the machine and sew it all the way around with half an inch seam allowance. So here's a closer look of um, what it looks like after I got done pinning it together. So those are my pleats. If you want smaller pleats, you can just add smaller pleats, pleats to it right there. Or if you just want gathers too, you can just add gathers to, to the top right there. And if you don't want anything, you can just take that part out doing cotton. So here's what it looks like after I got done putting the sleeves or adding the sleeves to the bodies. And that is that pleat area. So if I turn it to the right side, so here is what the pleat looks like. Right there. That's the other side. So here is the right side of the fabric. So we're going to add interfacing to the placket of the dress. So those are in a fusible interfacing and it is one inch. So we're going to turn it in the, in the wrong side of the bodice. We're going to lay it on the edges of the of the front so this is not long enough and that's the reason why I have it cut in two so I'm just aligning it then I'm going to use an iron to just press it down on it and this is just so it can have enough weight for the buttons so I'm going to do it to the other side too so that's the right side. I'm turning it to the wrong side and I'm going to attach it to the wrong side. Remember, you're attaching it to the wrong side, not the right side. And this is for um, the fabric to be a little bit thicker so it can hold the buttons. I am done attaching the interfacing here and what I also did is I finished the edges with interlock so if you don't have an interlocking machine here is what you can do on the next step you fold it like this with half an inch then you now fold it one inch back Then you now go and stitch on top of it all the way down. But if you have an interlocking machine like I do here, all you have to do is just fold it like that. And then stitch on it all the way down. You do the same thing to the other side. So here is one thing I love to do. So you know, some people just like to stitch their own all the way down like that. Then they now fold the hem on top of it like this. But I really don't do mine like that. I do my hem first. I just know it just gives me some better look. So I put my do my hem first all the way around and I will now fold it on top. Okay? 
So after I do my hem like that, then I will now fold that on top of it, which means I will now sew it all the way down like that. I am done sewing it all the way down. So that's the placket for the buttons. And that is the other side. Also, that is the hem. I have also gone ahead and done the hem of the sleeves. So here is it right here. I have done the sleeves. So what we're going to do next is the neck. And with the neck, the measurement of the neck, we have to be close to being precise. So grab your neck like that. From the front center front to the center back like that. And we have to grab our ruler and we're going to measure it. And this looks like 11 to me. So whatever measurement that you get, make sure you at least you're very close to being precise on it because it's going to affect the color if it's not correct. So what we are going to do after this, we're going to get a color stay. Then we're going to fold it into two. Like, like this. So make sure it's all even and straight. So I'm using the edge of mine and I'm measuring 11 inches on it like that. So I'm going to take my um, pen or marker and I'm going to mark it down. Like, like that. So I want my collar to be one and a half inches tall. If you want yours to be one inch, just use one inch on this on here. But I want mine to be one and a half inches tall. So I'm going to measure one and a half inches all the way for the width of the collar. Well, so when I'm done marking the one and a half inch. I'm just going to rule a line right there and I'm going to use my ruler to connect those dots. Then what we will do next is divide that 11 inches by 2 which is 5 and a half. So I'm going to measure five and a half, then I'm going to mark it right there. So that is divided by two, 11 divided by two. So whatever measurement you get divided by two. So at the corner right there, I'm going to measure half, half inch, like I just did right there. Then I'm just going to use my curve ruler to blend it into that five and a half mark that I marked to the middle actually like that so that half inch that I took from that down I'm going to add it to the top like that so I'm just going to join the lines then I will now mark the, the half 
of the 11 inch in the middle like that so I will use my curve ruler also to blend it I'm just doing the same thing like I did under to the top so if you use your ruler you see that it's one and a half inches so the same thing if you have one inch you're going to do the same thing here so what I'm going to do next is right at the one inch corner I'm just going to curve that corner I don't want to leave that corner sharp like that so I'm just gonna curve it like this when I'm done I'm just going to cut it all out then don't forget to cut the under too so here is what it looks like after I got done cutting it So now we're going to transfer it into a fabric. So grab a long fabric. So on the wrong side of the fabric, we're going to put this stay on top of it. Then we just make sure there is half an inch all around it. Half an inch all around. So get your scissors and cut it out, making sure you have half inches around it all. So you are only cutting one color stay, but you're going to cut two fabrics that looks like the fabric under this color stay. So which means one fabric we have the color stay on it, the other fabric will not have the color stay on it. So here is what it looks like after I got done cutting it. So we're cutting, we're going to cut two fabric that looks exactly like this. But just we're just cutting one color stay. I'm just repeating myself here. So I have add the color stay onto the wrong side of the fabric, and I've also cut out another fabric. So here it is right now with right side facing each other. Then I'm going to go stitch right there on the seam allowance all the way around that color stay. Then I'm going to stop at the other, other edge. So you're starting from one edge and stopping from the other end. Like that, like a U. Okay, so I am done doing that. So what I'm going to do is at that corners, at the round corner, I'm going to snip it a little bit, but be careful though so you are not cutting through your stitches. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. So I'm just putting a little snip, but be careful not to cut into your stitches. And this will just allow for flexibility when you turn it the other way. So now I'm going to turn it inside out. And here is what it looks like. You can use your iron to, to iron this down so it stays flat. So once you're done ironing it down, so you are going to tuck it in half an inch. So we're going to tuck half inches in. You know, that same allowance that was on, that we cut around the stay, we're going to tuck it in. Like that. So go and use your iron to, to, to hold it down. So I have done mine, I have used my iron to hold it down and I have tucked it in. You see the half an inch that I tucked in, right there, okay? So now we're going to attach it to the neck. So the part that has the collar stay on it will be at the back. The part that has, that don't have the collar stay will be on top. Then you're going to wedge that neck in between that collar 
like that. So use a pin to hold it down. And this is why we have to be precise with that length of that neck because if it's too small then we won't be able to get the neck in properly if it's too long then we'll be over the collar will be too long it will be longer than the neck so here's what we're going to do just keep sandwiching it in between and um, use your pin to hold it down So once you're done, you're going to stitch it all the way from one end to another. You're going to edge stitch it from one end to another. So here is what it looks like after I got done edge stitching it. And that is pretty much it. So you are at this point you are done. So what you're going to do is you're just going to add a button, add buttons all the way down. So you can leave, add a button up there on top of each other or you can just leave it open from you know that point then start your button from right there. So it all depends on whatever you want to do. So you can decide, you know, to add buttons every, you know, um, every four inches or every five inches or every three inches. It all depends on what you want. So that is, that is it guys. So if you're new to this channel, um, don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are a returning subscriber, don't forget to um, keep inviting people here to come check these videos out or my videos out. Thank you for stopping over. I will see you in another, in another video. Stay blessed and God bless you. Bye-bye.